Welcome one and all to the Back of the Nest Preview Podcast. I am your host Terence Ford and Albert and Sam are with me as we build you up to Brighton's visit to Selhurst Park in the not A23 derby, not the M23 derby. It's just the rivalry. Call it what you want. It's the big one for the season and we're looking to build maybe not on Liverpool, but on the result that we got against Spurs last time out of Sellers Park. Um, welcome to the show, lads. Albert, not not feeling so great today? No, on the cusp of a migraine. Uh, it might be the stress of the upcoming um, A23 derby, whatever they're calling <laughs> it. I think it. I think it's that. I think it's people calling it that that might have brought the migraine on. <laughs> uh, but, you know, all okay nice. for now. For now, uh, Heskiff, how are you doing? Uh, nervous already. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Um, yeah, doing all right. Uh, excited to have celebrated news of Albert's birthday uh, with tales of sick uh, in the car, in a bowl, all over the show. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get into that and we'll get into Albert's birthday in a little bit. But first, let's do this. I'm thirsty. I want a beer. What about you? You want a beer? I'm thirsty. Oh. I want a beer. What about you? That's that's played twice. Um, why, not? And why not? <laughs> um, I'm drinking proper job this week from St. Austell Brewery. It's dreadful. It's fucking awful. It tastes like chemicals. Don't buy don't buy beers from co-op or whatever. Um There goes there goes our sponsorship. <laughs> and it looks like I'm alone this week, so I'm assuming with a migraine. You're not drinking. No, I did consider it, and then I thought that's silly. And you know, I'm a I'm a year older and a year wiser, so I, I opted against it. <laughs> and Heskiff, um, is it more tales of flat fizzy water? Um, I I did have a red stripe earlier, but Albert oh. was so late in in joining us that that stubby was done very quickly. Uh, it's normal water. You still, it's you're not... talking about beer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, just um, water for me. Right, so because of your migraine, you've you you've only just literally on the back of a fag packet thrown together your Glen Murray beer, beer blurb for this week, um, and you had a lot to live up to after your brilliant uh, Mama Brew last week. Yeah, well, I, I worked on that one for at least a minute, and <laughs> this one, I mean, I, I haven't got a fag packet to write on. Um, because you're a year older and wiser. No, <laughs> no, I'm just ill prepared. <laughs> so is this going to be a off the top of the dome freestyle? Maybe. Okay. Can't well, I, I because I thought you weren't going to write one. I've I've written one. Yeah, so who, on, should, who should go first? It'll be it'll be like a eight mile battle. Mm. <laughs> Hester, well, are you going to drop a beat or? No, <laughs> uh, never mind. Uh, no. Go on, Acapella, tea. mate. Acapella, go for it. Right, I've gone um, because of obviously my favourites are fruit sours. Um, this beer is going to be called Fruit Dower. This traditional sour beer is brewed with 17 types of wild bacteria and is so sour it will make you grimace when it hits the back of your taste buds, even though you'll be delighted inside. Listen for the extra <laughs> when you open a can and don't forget to swirl at the end for a deadly finish. Enjoy this fruit dower by the sea or in the city, available in all Tesco stores, but has been seen in Sainsbury's. Very good. That's very good. I mean, the the FFS was, I don't know, that was that was region, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, on, I'm, I'm, I'm not putting the boot in because my, 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 you know, <laughs> I've called mine, I've called mine f- for fuck Saki. Oh, great minds. I Very toyed good. with that idea. Yeah. Uh, oh, come on, mate. You can't say that now. <laughs> uh, this 17.5% beer, that's the rate of that. Fucking hell. <laughs> it's a bottle of wine. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's also the, the rate of VAT that he was accused of dodging uh, this 17 <laughs> I feel I feel if you have to explain it it's not as good um, any accountants listening would have got it uh, this 17.5% beer will make you go weak at the knee 
and dodge the fat man <laughs> and be inconsistent at penalties. There you go. That's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> So gone after Glenn Murray there, completely unnecessary. Why mine was all about, you know, you can enjoy this fruit thou or by the sea or in the city. Um, yeah. You've gone the complete opposite route and gone, fuck, well, fuck you, Glenn Murray. Light and shade, isn't it? You know, something for everyone there. <laughs> well, um, enough said, I guess. We must do better next week or try better. But for this week, Albert, it was your birthday and you got a bit of this. Booyaka, booyaka, it's a birthday alert. Booyaka, booyaka. <laughs> the one and only General Levy. I can't believe you cut out the bit where he rhymes <laughs> the only the only word that probably rhymes with Albert. Albert. You didn't let him finish the couplet. You shit. <laughs> well, you can share it share it on your socials so people can um, hear how your friend with one of the worst names that you can possibly have. <laughs> Friends. Yeah. <laughs> Should be my brother. Oh, is it your brother? Yeah. Well, he's, he, his brother. His brother's called Neil, and um, it was. I was highly amused at General Levy crowbarring the name Neil into all of his rhymes. Yeah, but he did rhyme it with "for real," which is pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it's General Levy. Of course, it was going to be good. <laughs> yeah, my brother Neil, who did send me an FYP mug for my birthday, but we'll move on from that. Uh, so that's you drinking from an FYP mug, Heskiff. I didn't say. I, I didn't say I drunk from it. Heskiff. You sent us a, a picture right. of you drinking from it. That was just pretend. Mm. There's nothing Heskiff in it. Heskiff used to edit FYP and wrote for the latest issue. Um, is there something you guys aren't telling me? Catch us on the Patreon. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you had loads of... Your, your birthday didn't quite go to plan, did it? No, um, you, no. You woke up great start to the day with General Levy, like, you know... It took a very steep decline after the general movie <laughs> <laughs> memo video. Uh, yeah, had my... Well, the previous night we had to cancel going out for a dinner due to a uh, vomiting child who arrived in the kitchen and exploded all over the floor about half an hour before the babysitter was due. Um, we still considered it before. No, it's not fair. Uh, and then birthday morning all fine he seemed okay and then on the way to collect my other son he uh exploded again but this time in the back of my car so there i was scooping out vomit from like the the hole you know the sort of cup holder in the passenger door he managed to get it right in there uh he then i then managed to take his little hoodie off which he was covered in vomit and i sort of tried to whip it like a towel to get all the lumps off and some of it went back in my face <laughs> so that's fine we moved on from that and then had a nice sort of home cooked meal with joe in the evening and about five minutes after we finished that she went oh don't feel very well and she started being sick as well so happy birthday i was the only person probably not sick on my own birthday you know that's not how you're meant to do it but again i guess that's 37 isn't it happy birthday me well good constitution i hope you didn't get sick yourself yeah, I'm, I'm all right. Does that, does that mean that you got you got to eat all the cake yourself? You didn't have to share it? No, because it, it was after the dinner, you see. Oh. Best of both worlds. She got to enjoy all of the food with none of the calories. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, sounds like your birthday went as well as Aki Realite's quick step in the finished version of Strictly Come Dancing. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to get voted off, but he scores of... Seven six six Heskiff, not not the greatest, not the greatest you could get. Uh, no, but also not the worst. I feel like seven six six is probably his football rating across his <laughs> career, isn't it? <laughs> so I think he's probably he's probably all right with it. Mm. Yeah, definitely like a seven out of ten every week kind of player. Yeah, that'll get you quite far into the competition. I mean, I'm not a dancing expert, but I did watch it. I couldn't see anything wrong with it. I thought it was all right. I, I, I thought the judges' scores were really harsh, but obviously you couldn't understand a word they were saying, so it was very difficult to understand why they were slagging them off. But I, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Well, but, um, that's, that's why we're not judges on Finnish Strictly Come Dancing. I mean, 
Um, we forgot to mention on last week's show that Aki Riolati ended up listening to our pod where we discussed him being on Strictly and um, was very delighted and seemed highly amused that him being on Strictly should be analysed in such depth on a Premier League preview podcast. <laughs> uh, little does he know that um, it was followed up by a tweet. So I was saying, I think he got into the football talk in minute 38 of the pod this week. <laughs> I'd just like so, to say, I didn't just say I thought his dancing was really good in the hope that he was still listening. I wasn't being sycophantic. I genuinely thought it was good. And had I had a bit more time, I'd start a new job today. I might have done a little heat map of his Foxtrot. But <laughs> we'll have to it, wait it, for that. It would have been a bit more difficult heat map than uh, Mark Noble's heat map from the weekend then. <laughs> yeah, that was good. He actually overtook um, Edouard as the... Uh, what do you call it? The high, highest expected goals in the Premier League this season. Oh, his expect, his sort of... expected goals per ninety minutes was thirty-five and point something, but of course he had zero goals. Yeah, I thought you were going to make some sort of air rifle joke and about his accuracy with that. But that's fine. Um... <laughs> he paid the price though. Do you remember, eventually, do you remember when Mark Noble went on TV and said the getting? I think it was did they draw against us? He said it was a, a guttering result. Do you remember that? <laughs> I, do rem- I do remember that. Yeah, it's guttering. Guttering. Yeah. Do you remember when he played for England? Uh... No, me neither. Oh, we... <laughs> we all... <laughs> to, be, to be honest, though, with penalties like that, he'd fit right in. <laughs> Coming off the bench to, um, yeah. Wonder what all your EDL viewers would have thought of that one. <laughs> uh, what we got? Safe standing has been... There's no well, such at thing. A, at least the trial has been approved from the 1st of January. Um, Albert, could this would this bring you out of the main stand or the... Um, not the main stand. Are you in the main stand now? I don't know where you are. You move. You're like... Uh, it's been so long since I've been to a game. I'm not totally <laughs> sure. I mean, wh- whatever they call the white horse now. I thought, family stand. The family, the family stand. stand. Yeah, yeah, I'm in there. Neil, Neil Mopay's favourite place um, to give it to. Um, Not on Monday, please. Um, what <laughs> if, uh, no, well, I'm in the family stand because I sit with my boy, so standing probably isn't the best idea. If, um, if he projectile vomits on Monday, do aim him at Neil Mopay, though. Yeah. That's acceptable. Like like the, the sprinklers on the pitch when they yeah. come, on a bit, uh, come on a bit early. Mm. Um, Hesketh, can you see this at Sellers being the entire Homesdale lower? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, the Homesdale lower, certainly the bits that we stand in have been, everyone's been standing up for like years now anyway. And it'd be nice not to smash the back of your leg on your seat when you're sort of celebrating a goal. Didn't, mm. didn't really have much of that under Roy, so I didn't really notice it. But now that we're actually scoring goals under under Vieira, uh, it would be nice to to get it all to get it all done, uh, but thinking how long it's taken us logistically to do anything on the main stand, the idea of replacing all the seats with safe standing in the next decade seems far fetched. We've only just got plastic seats in there. Come on. <laughs> how 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 would Patrick Vieira say? I've smashed my knees into the seats in front. Uh, smashed my knees. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like he's, he always says he speaks French, but whenever he's invited to speak French, there's just an utter reluctance to do it. Jay Casse Mejanou. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, well, look, safe standing or not, it wouldn't save Connor Wickham, that's for sure. He'll, um... oh. <laughs> he can have Albert, my seat. He made it seven minutes into his Preston debut before hobbling off injured. I mean, I shouldn't laugh, really. Well, yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, we can't take much joy in that. Um, but is anybody had... fucking surprised? <laughs> well, um, an excerpt from uh, the match report. The only sour note for the host was an injury to new signing Connor Wickham. The former Crystal Palace striker hobbled off after just seven minutes with a knock. Preston boss Frank McAvoy. I was a little bit concerned about Connor's injury early on. Um I mean, <laughs> you should be because yeah. you won't see it for the rest of the season. And by early on, he means before kickoff. During the warm-up. 
Heaven mm. forbid we draw Preston in any sort of cup because that would have to, Connor Wickham would have to be the the beer blurb and mm. it's only going to go not... one way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll have to remain in the cup for some sort of longer than seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, apparently, I'm going to be picking up an injury at Liverpool, uh, not Liverpool away, at Leeds away. Um, before the Liverpool game this week, got a picture message from from my friend Nick, and it was a picture of him and Chris from One More Point, <laughs> who um, they both are chatting across the table, uh, realised who I was, and he just the picture was headed. I'm sat here with a whole season ticket holder. If you remember from the show a few weeks back, <laughs> that's what I refer to him as. He said he's going to beat me up at, at, at Leeds away, Hesketh. Social yeah. media. Spat of the year. <laughs> I didn't even know we were in a spat. I didn't even know he was listening. But he said, well, it, it, but he, he also said he's still the best Palace writer. I mean, not when I'm alive, he ain't. Did... <laughs> how did um? How's it gone down, uh, Heskiff? Your 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 faux diary of um? I, I mean, tra- I... the transfer window. Uh, it's the faux diary of how we appointed Patrick Vieira. Vieira, that was And it. I would absolutely love to tell you that I've been inundated with praise, but I haven't heard anything. <laughs> <laughs> so Not and, even from your mum? Uh, no, nor my wife. Both of them have read it. They just walked out of the room. So that's where we're at. <laughs> um, well, you won't be getting any big interviews like Eze got this week by Premier League Productions. Um, I know you've watched it, Heskiff. Have you managed to get round to it, Albert? Yes. Yes. No, no. <laughs> Too busy scooping up vomit out of cup holders. Thank you. I wasn't going to say that, but you've dug me out there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 25 I mean, minutes. It's long, it, isn't it? It's, it's not, though. When you watch it, it really isn't. Um, I, I thought that, and it flew, it flew by when I was watching it. So much so that I was... Um, two minutes late for a work meeting because it <laughs> before I'd realised that there was still five minutes of it left and I was like, oh shit. This That's isn't this isn't this meant girl. to sound derogatory, but next next time I need a poo, I will commit to watching it. Because twenty five minutes just to myself is under that- the guise of needing the toilet is that's gonna be good content. Any other bodily fluid poo, you want to tick off? The- is it a fluid? Well, it depends, doesn't well, it? So, yeah, it sounds like it would have been fluidy by all your family members in the yes, last couple of yeah, days. I, I, yeah, I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like ice cream. Was it liquid or solid? We weren't sure. It, yeah. Anyway, it's like ice cream. <laughs> Moving on. That's, I do want to watch it. Um, I, I, like, I like hearing Eze talk a lot, and I've heard lots of nice stories about how nice he is sort of from people that mm. know him from QPR. And it's not a lack of not wanting to see it. I haven't willfully ignored it um i just haven't got around to it just got better things to do um i've got a question for you heskiff um but your dog boy aside you're not a parent um do you have 25 minute poos or is this only a thing that dads do when they're trying to escape their families uh i mean that seems like an awfully long time i mean that's just that's just warming up so that's how long it takes me to, you know, sort of lay down a couple of sheets of toilet paper perfectly to stop the splashback. I find 25 minutes is the limit before your knees go a bit wobbly and you get pins and needles in your feet. And yeah, you especially especially if you've been them. leaning on your knees as well Absolutely. with your elbows. Yeah. yeah, ouch, murder. I mean, I've, I've usually finished within the first couple of minutes. It's just um, 23 minutes then of scrolling time or essay yeah. interviews, as it were. <laughs> This is an eye-opening episode for me. I like what you've done there. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, Eze could go on a twenty-five-minute dribble. To be fair, <laughs> sorry for this thing, Aki Rialati. But um, Heskip, he came across extremely well in this interview, didn't he? I mean, I, I said to you before recording, I can't believe how how his head's so screwed on at such a young age. Yeah, he's great. He's so he's so positive with everything he says. I think a lot of people with his injury, especially on the day that he gets a text saying he's in the England squad, you would think that they'd really, really struggle. And he did say, you know, he was crying and he was upset, but 
like how he sort of bounced back and and been positive and saying things like he's enjoying watching the football we're playing this season. He can't wait to be a part of it. It's just really yeah up, uplifting and and he's he just seems very happy um, about you know life at Palace. So um, it's easy to see how he's so popular when he hasn't even played in front of a full crowd. You know, I think he's had mm. those two games, um, Tottenham and Arsenal, where there were sort of a few fans in. But no, I he think... was already injured by Arsenal. He got injured just before yeah, Arsenal. Yeah, there you go. So he's, yeah, they had the Tottenham game. So I think when he comes back from injury to a full Selhurst, I think it's going to be an absolutely m- mammoth noise to welcome him. Uh, and, and rightly so, because like you say, everything about the interview, he, he just comes across so well. Um, and he's still so young. So, yeah, a lot to look forward to. Um, Albert, it's also worth picking up for him talking about the feelings he got inside when he first saw Patrick Vieira in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made him feel warm and fuzzy. Oh, I thought you were segueing back to like bowel movements or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like, Me I too. Trying- me too. I was trying to leave them behind me, to be honest. Well, the best place for him. Um, <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, he's such a just, just he's, he's got the most infectious smile. I thought, I thought Will had an infectious smile, but I think Eze just, just nips in there and takes that crown. Yeah, well, Will is often sprinkled with a lot of um, screw face as well, though. To be honest, so with, with a lot of tang, tanganga hand. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds like an awful medical condition. Um. <laughs> mm, indeed. Uh, but while we're on Wilf, he's also been giving an interview this week on Talk Sport, I believe it was, on Darren Bent's boot room, I think is what it's called. Um, sorry to Darren Bent if you're listening, and I, I've got that wrong. Um, but he says, on Crystal Palace fans, they're the only fans that will back you through everything literally everything even when you're on bad form they will remember the amazing performances you had winning a trophy for this club would be massive we owe it to the fans um Hesky, if that sounds like he might have realized his fate and settled in for the long haul now particularly now that Patrick Vieira is here I mean that's the dream for me I, I, I said it every time you mention it uh, I'm selfish and I Yes, he deserves to play at a high level and in Europe and all the rest of it, but I don't want him to. I want him to stay at Palace. Uh, and play, get into play, Europe yeah. with Palace. Yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously. <laughs> um, but, but that's the thing, you know, I, I, there were a lot of sort of dissenters against him the last couple of years. Oh, we, we should just sell him. He doesn't want to be here, blah, blah, blah. But I think he's always been, you know, really happy to play for our fans. I think he loves the club genuinely. And... You know, to hear him to hear him say how much he appreciates the support and be super positive like that is great. And like I said to you before we started recording, the, the last message that I sent one of my one of my mates was anyone who said that we should sell Wilf can eat shit, and I stand by it. Mm. Yeah, there was... it's always, it always goes back to shit. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. I mean, I I think we touched on it last week about people, me wondering where the Will Faters had gone after his performance against um, against Spurs. Um, you can never you can never write him off um, because you just know out of nowhere he's going to turn it all on and then just be be Will for the next several several games. So be delighted if he sees out his career, at least like the prior, the, the peak of his career with Crystal Palace. I mean. Um, you know, that Eze interview, the way he was talking about Vieira and, you know, talking the, the long standing plan that Friedman had, talking about these moments now that we're having now is why Eze signed for us over a year ago because Friedman laid out our plans in front of him and it's all come to fruition in that sense. And um, it's going to be hopefully exciting times for us over, over the coming weeks. Um, but of course, it didn't go quite to plan at Liverpool um, Albert your magic dice got it got it wrong no but I did also say listen guys if we come away on the wrong end of a 3-0 there's nothing to be ashamed of so I kind of did still predict it 
Mm. You know, and it was and it was the wrong end of a three 0 is kind of probably right as well. It didn't feel like a three 0 did it? No, not at all. You know, you look at I hate I hate Klopp as we've previously discussed, <laughs> but you look at Klopp's comments and you know he's he's not one to blow smoke unnecessarily, and he says you know is a the hard what do you whatever you call it the hardest fought three nil that they've ever had or whatever so mm. you know we weren't we weren't a disgrace uh it's not like we sat back and invited the pressure um you know some some dodgy moments from set pieces which all teams are prone to every now and then especially a you know a team that's relatively new along the back um and liverpool are liverpool so i don't think we need to take you know too much out of that game in terms of negativity or change what we're trying to do, you know, we were, we obviously weren't quite as good as we were against Spurs. Liverpool are a better team than Spurs. And it was just a, you know, a touch unfortunate. So. Mm. And on another day, it's not, you know, the clean sheet is what feels for Liverpool. It feels the most harsh is on another day. We could have definitely scored goals. If you think we hit the post twice, um, we had, the most Stonewall of Stonewall penalties turned out. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was ridiculous. I mean, I know uh, apparently there's some suggestion that Wilf was offside in the build-up um, and that might be why VAR didn't go any further because they just looked at the line and saw that Wilf might have been offside so it didn't get looked at. I don't know whether that's true or not. I saw Chris Grierson on Twitter saying that he was going to request the information from the Premier League but whether he shared that or not, I didn't. I haven't seen it yet. Um, but, I, I mean, it's a joke. How how that game's not been stopped there and it been very clear that VAR is looking at it. I don't, I've not seen. I was going to say I've not seen such a bad decision for ages, but then it only took until the Sunday to see equally terrible decisions. Was just what an awful Shockers weekend. Everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I hate to, I hate to reel out the old cliche, but you know if that's Salah or Mane or mm. any Liverpool player down the other end, yeah, that's that's it's getting you can it's definitely getting looked at, and yeah. I'd bet. Uh, something big that they would give it. So yeah. no, they absolutely would. Yeah, it is mad, and um, yeah. But it, it, then saying that on the Sunday, I mean that Cristiano Ronaldo, he, he did he tried for a couple, but the one in the middle, and maybe it was crying wolf for him. But there was the one. And it was funny because Martin Atkinson was the ref as well. And it was the one where he's just chopped him on the outside and the guy's oh, yeah. angled his leg out. And he's gone out. And it was exactly like the one he didn't give Wilf at the Emirates and then had to overturn through VAR. It was the same, exactly the same thing. It was like, it's a stonewall penalty. I yeah. mean, he stuck his leg out. But then, like you say, you had the two either side where he flung himself to the ground mm. and rolled around and pleading at the ref on his knees that, you can, you can see why they don't want to give him that. I mean, people say that Wilf goes down looking for penalties, but you know, you never see him on his knees pleading like he's in front of a statue of Christ or something. It's just absolutely ridiculous what, what, he's, what he was doing. But it was a penalty. I mean, the second one for me of that game was a penalty. I mean, just some ridiculous decisions. And it's like, I remember for the first few weeks of the season, there was a lot of compliments going on about how the games are being allowed to flow a bit more in VAR or I'm getting involved too much. But it's now gone to the complete opposite extreme where you know it's not getting involved enough because it's clearly missing things that should have gone down. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we say we hit the post twice, could have had a penalty, a couple of scenarios where just better first touches, um, Edouard springs to mind from that brilliant pass. Or was it from Anderson who put him in behind uh, with the long diagonal? Um, Gallagher as well, one on the edge of the box where he just has to stretch a little bit for his first touch and can't bring it under. There were so many good points in that game where we could have scored goals. So I, was, I think everyone came away from it encouraged, really, and um, didn't really didn't dampen any spirits for me off the back of the win against Tottenham. And um, yeah, so your seasons aren't defined by your trips to Anfield, are they? They're you know, still one of the best teams there is in the game. So it is, it is what it is. Um, but it takes us on now to Brighton this week and <laughs> Heskiff. <laughs> I love how much you don't even want to pay attention to them. They've had a good start, haven't they? Was what you said to me before recording. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I didn't I, really I, go I, in depth. Yeah. <laughs> I'd classify four wins out of five and and into the third round of the, or fourth round of the cup um, as, yeah, a pretty good start to the season. They haven't played Paddy V's Flying Eagles, have they? Mm. That's, the, that's the marker. Well, I mean, 
uh, they lost 2-0 to Everton at um, at the Amex. Uh, Andros Townsend got some abuse there, didn't he? Yeah, apparently he shushed, shushed the Brighton fans, which is great. <laughs> nice to hear. Um, Albert, do you want to touch on Townsend's start for Everton? Shouldn't have let him go. Now I've said it. Yeah. Interesting. I think for these wages, I think we've touched on it before, but his wages, he probably had to, but he seems, still seems to be going well there and they, they seem to like him as well. Um, so Yeah, good for him. And I, like I say, yeah. I think we, we touched on it, you know, Everton should be a club that does better than Everton has done in the last couple of seasons. So, you know, to see Andros arguably go to a bigger and more promising club, I think probably surprised quite a few people, maybe including himself. Um so yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. He, he, again, he's another player that always comes across really well. Really like listening to listening to him talk. He always, he's always been, you know, he's always been very sort of what you want to, whatever you want to call it, forthcoming and friendly with Palace fans and on social media. And when he left, there was lots of sort of two way love. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's good to see him do well. Mm. I'm followed in though. It's the rules. Sorry, oh, yeah, I don't, standard. Yeah, yeah. I don't make the rules, Andros. <laughs> full on, full on block. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so they they lost there two 0 But you know, I thought when when I saw them up against Leicester this weekend, I thought that's going to be the first real test for them. And then you see the uh, after the, you know full time on looking on the, the live score app that I use, and it's they've won against Leicester at home and you're thinking, wow, that's a, that's a big win on the back of what they've already achieved. And then Albert, I watched match of the day too. And, um, did you, 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 you shaking your head at me. Didn't see this. They've been dis- dis- disallowing goals Two two Leicester goals got disallowed. Yeah. That's why I'm shaking my head. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you can understand the first one, I guess, but the second one is just appalling. If you want to just tell us in, uh, briefly what happened. Well, they disallowed a perfectly good goal. It's the only way I've said it's, it's, no, it's another, it's another stupid decision in a weekend of stupid decisions. I mean, I was still living about the the one that went against us, Benteke's penalty. But yeah, just I don't know. I, I don't know what's happened there. Yeah, I mean, I think they've had they've done Harvey Barnes twice for standing in front of the goalkeeper and, and impeding his view. I think yes, maybe for the first one you can understand why they've given it, but I don't. I also don't think it should have been given. And that's coming from someone who's a goalkeeper. I just don't think he there was anything the keeper could have done about it, regardless of whether he was there or not. And then the second one, he's just no. I mean, they, when they froze it on match of the day, you can see where the goalie's looking, and Harvey Barnes is nowhere near his eye line. It's just a ludicrous decision. So I think, and um, uh. Potter, Potter's his name, isn't it? I, I mean, their manager is such a non-event. I could always <laughs> struggle to remember his name. Um, he's no Gus Poirier in terms of a villain. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he said, you know, Heskey Finney's interview after this, it's been a lot of small margins and you can tell that he's trying to temper the atmosphere around Brian because everyone's getting a little bit carried away with themselves. He clearly doesn't think they're as good as the league table would suggest at the moment. Yeah, and I think you've got to sort of take into account the teams they've played. I mean, yeah, like you say, on paper, Leicester are, are, are a better team than them. But then, you know, they lost to West Ham, who we drew with. And when you sort of compare it to a start of the season, like we've had the teams that we've played where essentially we've just played the team at the top every week from <laughs> from the start of the season onwards. I think it's I think they do have to temper it as, as well as they've done. Um, and obviously you'd rather have... You'd rather have those wins than not, but this is a different game. I mean, it's obviously a uh, a rivalry game. It's going to be pretty heated. It's going to be a full full house again for the first time in a little while. So, um, I think he's probably doing the right thing and trying to temper their temper their sort of expectations a bit. Um, but yeah, it's one of those form book goes out the window things, isn't it? Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what's not ideal in a game where spirits are going to be running high and, um, you know, people are going to be wanting to get stuck in uh, out 
new assistant manager has already talked about them understand the importance of the game and you would hope that Patrick Vieira coming from a background of North London derbies will fully understand the importance of what a rivalry means to fans um, Andre Marin is the ref Albert um, the Andre Marin who sent Zaha off as sarcastic clapping him uh, could this be a worry for us that <laughs> in a game where Zaha's emotions are going to be running higher that he could end up getting himself in trouble but you know what? I'm, it's got to the point now where I'm worried about whoever the ref is because they're all in shit at the moment. <laughs> so they all become much of a muchness. But yeah, you know, you don't want to like. There's a really, there's a really sweet spot with Wilf where you you actually want him wound up. Mm. You know, Spurs is the there you go. There's the classic example. You want him wound up a bit, but you don't want him too wound up. And I think it's I think the the rest of the team have to have to help him with that, you know, and, and, you know, put an arm around him. And I mean, I don't know who's going to be captain. It might be Wilf. That'd be interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, they've, they've got, a, they've got to protect him a bit more. I mean, I, I was it a couple of seasons ago. Who was it that went steam, steaming through, was it go steaming through Luca? Like first minute, it was the home game that we lost. Yeah. It was Brighton. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was- was it, um, was it knockout? Was it knockout? It was knockout. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it, went straight for his nuts. <laughs> yeah, and and the the whole team just sort of withered, you know, into mm. themselves. And I'm not saying I want to see a ten a ten man brawl. I mean, I'm saying that, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you need to you need to kind of fight fight fire with fire a little bit and. And you know you've got to if, if they're going to be like picking on Wilf or whoever and giving them the rough treatment, the other the other players have got to step up and and either protect him or or give him a taste of their own medicine and, and don't let Wilf you know bear the brunt of that sort of you know that heat. Um, so yeah, I think Wil, Wilf's going to be in for a rough ride. Whatever he's just got to make sure he rises above it and and maybe watch the Tottenham game back and and give him the same treatment. Yeah, I agree. And I think if you do look at the Tottenham game, there was a lot of our team getting involved in that little rumble quite quickly. I think having Maka as captain is good because he is a bit of a shit. He was moaning a lot. There was a lot of him sort of, when you watch it back on telly, him in the corner of the picture just shouting fuck off at one of the opposition players. Mm. Um, Wardy got involved. I mean, if Wardy's getting involved and you're making an enemy of Jesus, then you know you've done wrong. Uh, Anderson was having a bit of a push as well. So I agree, we need to not be a passive sort of just let them get away with stuff team. And I'm hoping, I mean, obviously Vieira must have his fair share of red cards under under Wenger. Um, I'm hoping that that's part of it, sort of like the cliche, let them know they're in a game, but get stuck in, don't take any shit off them. If Ben Teke wants to go through Lewis Dunk, that's fine. Um, and I think I think we're more likely to be up for it and a bit more aggressive than we have been uh, sort of under Roy in the last few years. So hopefully we won't have a repeat of that uh, on Monday. Right. Okay. Patrick Vieira red cards. Little little sidestep. Um, there's an Aki reality joke in there somewhere, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave it alone. How many how many times do you think he got sent off in the Premier League? I'm going eight. Oh, I was going to say eight, so I'll go seven. No, it was eight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll leave you now. Did you look that up or something? I didn't. I knew it was, it was actually it was quite high. He's, he's tied um, for the most red cards in Premier League history with two other players. Um, any ideas? <laughs> One of them, I would say, is super obvious for Roy being. Lee? Yeah. Um, no, Roy Keane's on seven, so close. But the other one is also super like Roy Keane type, obvious. Um, the other one's just a clumsy centre back. <laughs> it's not. Well, I don't think I don't know if he's played in Premier League enough. But Lee Catamol jumps up. Lee Catamol's got seven. You guys are good at this. God, blimey! It's like, who, who, name it's like horrible. Come dancing in here. It's all <laughs> sevens and eights. <laughs> and you say the other person's got eight. Yeah, um, so so two more. So the three of them on eight. Patrick Vieira, one's a clumsy centre back, one's a thug of a centre forward. Bloody hell! 
The silence is deafening. Jamie okay. Carragher. Are you pulling Lee Catamo out your assholes? But yeah. <laughs> you, Can you we can't stop get... talking about asses and poo. I know I started <laughs> it, but Jesus. Um, uh, scored, scored a consolation against us in Lombardo's debut. Oh Christ! Oh, um, oh, uh, big dunk. Yeah, big dunk and Ferguson. There you go. And the guy with the other guy of eight, I believe, also temporarily holds the record away from Lewis Dunk for most known goals. Is it Jamie Carragher? No. Where's Morgan? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Richard Dunn. Oh, oh yeah, of course. Yeah. He used to get sent off for fun. And then completing the list, Roy Keane and Catamo on seven, uh, Nicky Butt and Andrew Cole on six, along with Frank Quadru. Blimey. Course, Gareth Barry and Vinnie Jones also on six. Did you say Andy Cole? Yeah, Andy Cole. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, I, I sit for what? It's four straight reds. <laughs> How is that possible? I just... He never seemed to say anything on the pitch, just scored goals. Too busy punching people by the sounds of it. It's because someone <laughs> called him Andy instead of Andrew and he lost it. <laughs> I mean, shout out to Vinnie Jones being on there with six when he barely played in the Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think if he <laughs> would have been a bit later, um, he would have probably topped that list. Um, anyway, we've, we're, we've, we've moved away from uh, talking about Brighton here. So what Mariner was, a, was the rep. Yeah, what a shocker. Um, Heskiff, it's a story. Is it going to be the story of two French strikers in Edouard and Morpé for either one who's going to steal the headlines in this game? Or, you know, Brighton have got to, just looking at them, they're fucking land of the Giants. I'm probably going to need to play Benteke. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I was, I was thinking during the Liverpool game, because I was advocating starting Benteke at Liverpool, because um, I don't think it would be fair to drop him. But I do wonder at what point we decide to start Edouard. You know, um, he's looked, yeah, his touch, his touch in the box against Liverpool was was a bit off. Um, but he looked quite strong when he was when he basically got chopped like three times and the referee didn't give anything um, when he was when he was sort of through on goal. So I wonder if if it's time to to bring him in. But then, do you want to do it in such a a game of such magnitude? I don't know. Um, Albert, is it because he's a new signing and he's just come off the back of scoring two goals on his debut that you, you allow him to get away with that chance against Liverpool um, with the touch, or was it just a very difficult ball to bring under control? Yeah, a politician's answer. I think it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. I mean, it's no footballer, you know, no footballer is going to take every chance that comes to him, and you know. It, especially when you come off the bench, um, you know, given him, given Benteke enough slack over the, over the last couple of seasons for, you know, fluffing chances and miscontrolling half chances. So I think, again, I don't think you can, you can start slagging Edouard off, but um, all said and done, you know, I think I'd want, I'd, I'd still want Benteke to start and see what happens and bring Edouard on to hopefully either, wrap it up nicely or, or nick it if it's if it's still a you know scores a level with half hour to go. Mm. So Heskiff, before you give me your prediction, are you worried? Yep. <laughs> and the re- the reason I'm worried, I mentioned this to a friend the other day, uh, who is gonna be at the, the their first Palace Brighton game on Monday. So sh- shout out Francesca. Um, I'll force her to listen to this as well. I don't think she listens. Um, but I said, you know, we've played like shit against Brighton for the last sort of four or five games that I can remember. And we haven't lost. So I think now that we're playing some nice stuff, I'm worried that we're going to be the team that does all the pressing and is a superior team, but we'll lose. That's that's my ever optimistic mindset. Mm, um, Albert, the dice. Calling for them now. <laughs> <laughs> I notice how no one's mentioned Jean Philippe Mateta. Mm, well, it's yeah. There was an article about him saying he's he's in a quandary. Um, it's, I don't know if it. Um, 
know what Condry means, but <laughs> is he going to get to the 15 games? That means the loan's got to be made permanent. Very, very unlikely. Um, I'm, I'm assuming come December, January, <laughs> we're all going to cut tyres and hopefully get him on, onto another club. Apparently, he's not wanted back at Mainz. So, yeah, he's, he's, I don't think it's going to happen for him. Reminds me die. of um, the Alex Alex Sorlot. Um, I saw that <laughs> the Neil Warnock thing come up on my feed. I think it was today or yesterday when um, <laughs> he's on Soccer Saturday and Jeff Stelling starts talking about Sorlot going, oh, Palace have scored 24 goals this season. Sorlot at Trasbon Sport has scored 24 goals. And Neil Warnock says, yeah, but if, did you see him play? You would have rather started you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Neil. Yeah, exactly. Neil got his, got his signed photos. Oh, he did. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> time for the dice. It's time for the mm. dice. Okay. Oh, two. That's a good start. It's not. Oh, fuck. Um, no, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. <laughs> fuck the dice. What was it? I'm not having that. It was uh, a five or something. It was it, oh, it's actually quite realistic. It was a, it was the second one was a three. So it was a, yeah. that's a three-two win for Brighton. But I'm not having that. Let's go again. Oh, six-six. No, bear with me. <laughs> Five-one. There we go. We'll take that. Five-one. So, so, so we've got a win, a win, a draw, and a loss there. Yeah, but no. we're definitely going to win five-one. <laughs> okay. Um, if we do win five-one, we'll go back retrospectively and just edit the entire part of that out, and we'll just. You'll you'll also have to edit the part out where I just get naked and run round Salas Park, giving it large <laughs> to the Brighton coaches. When yeah. I say coaches, I mean the the vehicles, not the specific coaching staff. I mean maybe who knows? Um, as long as as long as when you're running around naked, you don't do a tasty jerk. I tend to do that before the game. <laughs> Uh, uh, go on then, uh, Heskiff. What's your prediction? Who wanted oh. the gravy? No. Oh. Um. Oh God, fuck! I don't know. Two one Brighton. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> I've just looked up as we're recording, and there's a picture of both Wilf and Neil Mope, and I hate Neil Mope's face. Heskiff, I'm going to roll the dice for you. This is for you. This one. Okay, go. It, it says. Come on, you miserable bastard. Ooh, these dice oh, are good. I, I reckon, wow. yeah. I reckon you're going gonna... like to... They're like a magic eight ball. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will go for... It actually said 4-2 to Brighton on that one. So, <laughs> so, so... Even more miserable than the actual Heskiff. Yeah, damn. <laughs> it was a double, a double the pasting. Um, I'm going to go for a one-one. Um, it's always going to be. It's always tight between us in recent years. I think it will stay that way. Um, they've obviously had a good start. They're going to be coming in on a on a bit of a high. Uh, we'll be happy to get back in front of the sellers crowd again. It's going to be yeah. It's going to be a close one. Um, hopefully, we can nick it off them. They don't nick it off us. But I think most likely we'll end up with. Something around a one. Oh, right. That's your lot for this week. Um, the following weekend is, is Leicester at home. It's Leicester at home. It you did look up. It's a Sunday, Sunday two o'clock. Is it a T? Yes. Is it a TV one or is it because of European competition? Because they that are in Europa know. now, aren't they? Nothing worse than being the Sunday games that aren't on TV. I mean, what is the point? Mm. Yeah, with me um, having to scale back Northern away games this season, um, I had a disaster with a Liverpool stream. It was an absolute disaster. So I might, may, I may or may not have this week gone down some sort of fire stick route that um, may or may not be. Um, well, yeah, I, w- I won't say anything else. That, <laughs> but with, with fear of incriminating myself, <laughs> incriminating myself. But on a completely separate and unrelated note, I've managed to watch Ted Lasso a couple of episodes of Ted Lasso this week. Um, nothing to do with a fire stick at all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, good show. A um, couple of good bits around Sellers Park as well and enjoying it. Um, if you haven't watched that yet. Uh, so yeah, 
Uh, match report will be this weekend with Heskip as the, all the usual. Look out for DR on the Palace Focus, which is streamed. What are they doing? They do that Mondays usually, don't they? Or Tuesdays? Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Can't, can't do it Monday this next week. Mm, exactly. So it'll be Tuesday, I imagine, because it is anyway. <laughs> and um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Heskiff, you were worried about them talking about, laughing about you when your yeah. name was mentioned. Yeah. Did you clear it up? Uh, were you happy? Were you happy with it? No, I'm laughing with, with you, not at you. I'm holding it back so I can attack Dr. in person with it. <laughs> Just grab him by the beard and swing him around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so look out for all the stuff. Keep keep your eyes peeled to the socials for all that information, and uh, we will be back next week, normal time in your ears. Thank you to Samantha Clasher, who's having having a tough time recently for producing. Clacker. Send some love her way. Clacker. Clacker. Clacker? Edit that bit out, Sam. That's a shame, isn't it? She's got, she's got to edit out her, that bit where her own name is mispronounced. Um, and as always, I must remind everyone listening uh, that Lewis Dunk is a cunt. Thanks. It wouldn't be a Brighton preview show without it. Until next week, everyone. Up the palace.